We are live now. Link is being shared. Okay. In one minute, we, we can now. go live. Yes. Okay. So, Preeti ma'am, please be ready. Huh? There is some problem in my video. No, no, please no, be ready. No, no, no. Hello, Preeti ma'am, are you there? Yes, 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 ma'am. Ma ma ah, so, please be ready. There is some problem. Just tell me start. I will start it. Okay? Yes, ma'am. Please start. Good afternoon, everyone. On behalf of the Imara Memorial Foundation College of Commerce and Science, Principal Ms. Sweden Likula, Head Department of Dr. Economics, Dr. Neha Goyal, and I, Ms. Priti Vishwakarma, would like to welcome you all for today's session. Now, I would like to invite our principal, Ms. Sweden Likula, to have her thoughts before we start with the session. Yeah. Eminent Principal of St. Gonzalo Garcia College of Arts and Commerce, Dr. Somnath Vibhute, Ms. Manisha Thakur, Director and Co-Founder of Edfly, Mr. Viral Deria, EdTech Innovator and Co-Founder of Edfly and dear delegates. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Ladies and gentlemen, well, we are facing a time the likes of which we have never experienced, either in our personal or professional lives. Everyone is aware of the repercussions that this COVID-19 lockdown will have on the Indian economy. We also know that the Indian economy thrives on the large number of MSMEs that we have. But unfortunately, given the limited resources they have, MSMEs are said to be the most effective. If government measures and packages cannot sandwich this problem soon, it will have a serious impact on the livelihood of 113 million people who are employed in MSMEs. Thus, it is the role of us academicians to do research on this topic and to showcase the importance of MSMEs to our students. Keeping this in mind, we thought of taking up this much needed topic, economic impact of MSMEs post COVID-19 for today's webinar. Well, this webinar is special to me because uh, I had the privilege of being the student of our resourceful speaker, Dr. Somnath Vibhute during my graduation. And I'm so happy that he's with us here today to give us some pearls of wisdom from his knowledge bank. So thank you so much for accepting our request and being here with us today. I would like to express deep gratitude to Ms. Manisha Thakur, Director and Co-Founder of Edfly, Mr. Viral Deria for collaborating with us to host this webinar. I would also like to thank all the delegates for the amazing response for the webinar that we have received from all over India. Nirmala Memorial Foundation College of Commerce and Science has been conducting a series of webinars and faculty development programs 
in this COVID-19 lockdown. And this is the 14th webinar organized by us, thanks to my wonderful team of colleagues. I would also like to thank Mrs. Aruna Desai, the director of Nirmala Memorial Foundation College of Commerce and Science for giving us the opportunity to conduct this webinar. I would love to acknowledge the efforts of the planning forum and Department of Economics team, Dr. Neha Goel and Ms. Preeti Vishwakarma for putting together this workshop. Wish you all the best to get the most enriching inputs from this webinar. Stay safe, stay strong, stay updated. Thank you. Now I would like to introduce our speaker of the session, Dr. Sona Tribute, who is a principal of Spen Gonzalo Gracia College of Arts and Commerce, Vasai, and member board of studies in economics in the University of Mumbai. Sir has presented several research papers in various national and international conferences, seminar, symposias, and journals too. So far he has written 18 books, and several articles which are published in newspaper such as Lok Satta, Navakal, Rahar, Maharashtra Times, etc. and many more articles are on the way. Now let's begin our session with the topic of economic impact on MSME post-COVID-19. Uh, uh, if you have any kind of query and question during the session, all the participants are requested to type it in the chat box. At the end of the session, we will have a question answer round. That time you, you, uh, your query will be solved. Also, I request all of you to attend the full session as after the end of the webinar, there will be a quiz along with the feedback form. Now, I request Vipute sir to start with the session. Vipute sir, I'm handing over to you. Thank you, Professor Preeti. Uh, at the outset, I would like to congratulate uh, Principal Swiddle Madam and uh, her team for uh, organizing such a very important kind of webinar on the contemporary topic of uh, economic impact of uh, COVID-19, particularly in the context of micro, small and medium enterprises. Uh, before I start my presentation, I would like to uh, just get an input whether my presentation is visible to you. So I share my presentation. Uh, Madam Preeti, is it visible? Yes, sir, it is. So let us start with a slideshow. Yeah, so economic impact on MSMEs post COVID 19. Friends, uh, at the outset of the presentation, I would wish to give a roadmap of my presentation. At the outset, I would start with a little chronology of this COVID-19 world pandemic, how it evolved, and how it expanded, etc. Followed by the understanding of MSMEs, pre-COVID and post-COVID scenario. Then third aspect of the presentation will be the impact of COVID-19 on MSMEs. And I would end the presentation with recently announced package, overall package called as the Atma Nirbhar Bharat package and then for micro, small and medium enterprises. So starting with the first part, the chronology of COVID-19. Friends, you can see here a map of China and uh, the star is marked from this map where that uh, 
badly famous place called as Wuhan is there from where this deadly virus emerged and it spread across the globe. We can see that uh, all over the world, in fact, WHO declared it as a world pandemic and 215 plus countries are severely impacted by this COVID-19. If you see little chronology, the first case of such a novel virus was reported on 17th of November, 1919 in Wuhan. One medical student traveled from Wuhan to Kolkata and then to Kerala in India. And on 30th January, 2020, first such case was reported in India. As far as Maharashtra is concerned, 7th March, 2020, the first case was reported in Pune. You can see so far, 5 million plus people, to be precise, 52,67,419 confirmed cases of coronavirus are there. And unfortunately, 3,41,155 people have lost their valuable lives. And that unfortunate story doesn't seem to end very soon. There was a news in the newspaper that India has now reached in the top 10 league as far as coronavirus is concerned. So moving forward, let us get acquainted with India's response to this COVID-19. How do we fight? And you can see that as a response to this COVID-19, first lockdown was announced on 25th of March till 14th of April, 21 days followed by second for 19 days, then third from 4th of May till 17th of May. And presently, we live in the fourth lockdown, and which is likely to be over by 31st of May 2020. If you go by numbers, the latest numbers are that 1,45,533 people are infected in India. However, the death rate seems to be, you know, like uh, quite controllable in terms of 4,175 people have unfortunately died and 60,000 plus people have recovered also. Now in economics, it is, it is, it is called as tsunami. No, like it is a devastating kind of crisis having deep-rooted impact on economy of India. International Monetary Fund describes this crisis as worse than 2008 global financial crisis, even much severe than the historical Great Depression of 1929. Moody, the rating agency, says that this crisis will have a deep-rooted scar on Indian economy as fiscal year 2021, India's economy will grow around 2% and it might bounce back to 6.6% depending on the extension of lockdown and our response and policy measures we adopt and how do we tackle and how do we reopen the economy, etc., etc. Center for Monitoring Indian Economy has exclusively given the database of job loss. There is no need of an economist to explain how people have lost jobs, but economists speak in number terms. And as per the CMI database, 91 million people in the categories of small traders and laborers, they have lost their source of livelihood. 18 million entrepreneurs, another 18 million salaried people, they too have lost their jobs or source of livelihood. Barring agriculture, where some positive activities around 6% have found, 6 million have found. 
the rate of unemployment for the month of May was reported at 24.6%. And CMIU further says that 27 million youth in the age group of 20 to 30 have, their, have lost their jobs in the month of April due to the complete lockdown of our economy. Coming to the core topic of today, after this chronological and economic repercussions in number terms, see micro, small and medium enterprises are really described as a backbone of our economy. How and in what terms? We will see that in the next slide, but before that you must know that micro, small and medium enterprises in India were governed under one act. And the act is Micro, Small, Medium Enterprises Development Act of 2006. It defines the MSMEs into three categories like micro, small and medium enterprises. And that too, again, dividing them into two different categories like manufacturing enterprises and services enterprises. If you see the manufacturing enterprises, how it was defined, if the investment put in by an entrepreneur in a firm is below 25 lakhs, then it was defined as a micro unit. If it was below five crores, then it was a small enterprises. And then if it was below 10 crores, then it was a medium enterprises. When we see the investment criteria to understand and to define the MSMEs, as far as service category is concerned, investment below 10 lakh rupees was a micro unit, below two crores was a small unit, and below five crore was a medium enterprises. You may have a question like why this distinction was there. Idea is a very simple because manufacturing requires a lot of machines, a lot of tools, a lot of equipments and all those things. And services perhaps don't need that much kind of uh, infrastructure, physical infrastructure to be ready for producing services. What happened post COVID? You know, like that backbone of India's economy in terms of MSME was devastated by COVID-19 and to give some sort of relief as a part of entire Atmanirbhar package, finance minister has tried to redefine these MSMEs. How do they redefine? You can understand one of the major things that now, unlike the past, there is no division like manufacturing enterprises and service enterprises. Now they are one and the same. They are put in one category only. However, they have retained two criteria to understand MSMEs. One is investment criteria and second is overall turnover criteria. Let us begin with the investment criteria. If a firm has investment below one crore, it is a micro investment below 10 crore. It is small unit and investment below capital investment below 20 crore. If then it is a medium enterprise. When you see that in terms of the turnover, if the turnover annual turnover of a unit is below five crores, then it is a micro unit. If it is a below 50 crores, then it is a small unit. And if it is a below 100 crores, then it is a medium enterprises. This is a proposed change. Try to understand. This is not yet notified by the government of India. An industry body has demanded that government has to rethink the last column, last row. What is that? It is a turnover of rupees 100 crores. And they are demanding, please make it at least 200 crores. 100 crore turnover is not a big turnover for a medium enterprises. Let government make it 200 or 250 crores per annum so that if that is done, which is most likely 
I think, from the government side. And if they make it 200 to 250, then 45 million more enterprises will be benefited. Now, you may have a question in mind. What is going to happen just by redefining these enterprises? Yes, there is a rationale behind redefining enterprises. What happens after redefining? You know, like most of the units which were in a medium category, they will be in small categories now. Those who are in the small categories, they will come in the micro categories. And as their categorization is redefined, they are likely to receive certain direct and indirect benefits, such as concessional rate of interest. You know, like usually in a normal scenario, the rate of interest charged on the loans availed by MSME lies between 9.5% to 17% per annum. Now, government has declared that through PSBs, that is public sector banks, the loans worth uh, or at the rate of 9.25%, as low as the rate of interest of 9.25% could be offered to MSME enterprises. Once the categorization happens, firms might get various tax benefits also. They might have an access to various government tenders. And you know, like in that same package itself is announced that all government tenders up to the value of rupees 200 crores will be exclusively for MSMEs or global tendering of such kind of tenders will not take place so that Indian enterprises will apply uh, for such kind of tenders. They might get higher preference and higher certification also in licensing. And there are other accrued benefits which they might get because of uh, redefinition of uh, MSME enterprises. So that is the rationale of redefining it. Now, as Principal Madam rightly said that MSMEs are very important from India's economic point of view. Yes, from our childhood itself, we have been listening that agriculture is a backbone of our economy. It is. Because 65% plus population still directly and indirectly depends on India's agriculture. But still, we can understand that even MSMEs contribute not less but 30% of India's GDP. See, 30% of India's GDP is not a joke. It is a big contribution. It employs 114 million people. In a percentage term, 45% of industrial employment comes from micro, small, and medium enterprises. MSME accounts for 50% of total exports of India, industrial exports. Out of total industrial units registered with government, 95% of units are in MSME categories. And 97% of the units, MSME units are smallest of small micro units, having you know, like few crore investment, employing more people, creating more job opportunities, using local resources, not to, you know, like seeking more of forex to import foreign machineries, tools, equipments, etc. And you will be surprised to know, like these MSME category in enterprises, they produce more than 6,000 plus industrial products. So therefore, it is a backbone of India's economy, employing many millions of people, providing source of livelihood to people and all. Now, the heart of the presentation is impact on micro, small, and medium enterprises. Although COVID-19 has affected the lives of everybody, whether you are in developed world or developing world, whether you are like Mumbai or hinterland of India or you know, like interior of India, everybody's life is affected very severely. The economic impact of COVID-19 
can be understood in the context of MSMA. And they need to be understood in a two terms like economic impact and social impact. <clears throat> you know, like as you are aware that most of these units are tiny units, smaller units or micro units. So most of them, they have their operations which are cash-based operations. It could be buying, say, raw material from local unit or local producer or selling their produce to a dealer or, you know, like another industry which is in a bigger category. So most of their transactions are based on the cash. And when COVID-19 scenario is there, cash regulations are going to impact such MSME units in a great way or in a disastrous way rather. Now the second impact can be seen in terms of labor force. You're aware that many MSMEs, unlike, you know, like big enterprises or unlike multinationals or transnationals, they get the work done by making use of labor force. Many hands are employed and that is the crucial problem. That is the crucial impact, you know, like, two months, almost two months, people were sitting idle, no job, no employment to their hands. They were locked and now they have fled to their natives. Anticipating further deterioration in the situation, people have opted to go to their native place. They have left their enterprises, no job, no source of income, no source of livelihood. So a biggest challenge, biggest impact on MSME is no availability of labor force. Or even if they're available, they've not been running the fullest. Capacity. So people have left their jobs, they've gone to native place, and firms, even though they are allowed by government to reopen and start operations, you know, like, there will be a serious problem of availability of the labor force. Now, the challenge is that you may get some local labor force also, but the challenge is that you have to reskill the people, and that upskilling of the people is not a is not you know like a very simple thing. It requires a lot of time, it requires a lot of efforts and money to put in, and then you may slowly and gradually can come on track. So labor is going to be serious impact followed by that positive of cash and kind of thing. Then raw material is going to be the next serious repercussion. Most of the micro, small and medium enterprises, you know, like they get local raw material, fine. But what is happening? You have seen that there are district barriers no movement, the transportation infrastructure is totally crippled. No logistics, no transportation. So you may have a raw material in the, available in the nearby district, but you will not get that raw material unless the roads are open, unless the rail links are open. And that is going to be a severe problem for micro, small, and medium enterprises. Mission to one, to some extent, you may have a labor force also. You may reskill them, but from where you are going to get raw material? And let me tell you, so many industries in India. It could be a pharmaceutical, it could be a toy making, it could be electronic, it could be uh, electricals. You know, like to a great extent, they depend on China to get their raw material. And what is happening in China? All the countries are furious in the world. They are blaming China. And they consider and they perceive that China has gifted this death machine to the humanity, which has killed millions of the people. And, you know, like, or affected millions of the people. Let us not buy from China. 
I believe it's very easy to say, but very difficult to implement. So economic impacts would be in terms of labor. They could be in terms of uh, even liquidity to some extent. Yes, loans may be available. Finance minister will say that we have told banks to, you know, like give loans to the MSMEs and all, but you know, like affordability of the loan and repayment of the loan, such kind of issues, lack of demand, and then who will venture into new loans and these big questions are there. So raw material could be a problem. Capacity utilization could be a problem. So you may have a same space for a factory, same machines are your employed, but you can't run all. You may have to run at 30% level or at 40% level. There are social impact also. The data tells us that two third of these MSMEs are owned by scheduled caste, scheduled tribes, and other backward class or community entrepreneurs. You know, like SCs, STs, and OBCs, socially deprived kind of categories. These people, when their source of livelihood as an entrepreneur, their source of income is stopped, you know, like they are going to face tremendous challenge in the future to come. Self-help group constitutes a larger part of MSMEs. 20% of MSMEs are owned by women generating income. Women as a source of supporting families, supporting small enterprises, micro enterprises is going to be, you know, like sufferer as far as this COVID-19 is concerned. There are many forward and backward linkages of this economic challenge and many such effects of COVID-19 in terms of economic analysis on micro, small, and medium enterprises will come up in a medium term and in near long term also. You know, like many MSMEs, they support agriculture. So when MSMEs are crippled, it will cripple the agriculture. They have a forward linkages by supporting or giving components and ancillary products to larger industries. So when MSME is hampered, the larger industry is going to be hampered. So those backward and forward linkages are going to severely affect the entire economy. Rather, it has impacted the entire economy. Now, by understanding this gravity of the situation, government thought that we need a special package I don't know why it is called as a package or how package is perceived as such. But out of those 15 announcements which Honorable Prime Minister made on television, I'm here to tell you seven to eight such announcements were for MSAs, micro enterprises. After thorough deliberations with economists, policymakers, thinkers, bureaucrats, and academicians, they have evolved this package. Although there was a massive criticism of the package, like this is a supply side package, and there is nothing called as a demand side, why it is to be called as a 10% of GDP, even though it is not going to be 2% of the GDP. We don't want to fall into the controversies. Let us try to understand the package in a true sense. What is the first provision in the package? The first provision is very clear that finance minister has said that collateral free or guarantee free loans worth 3 lakh crores will be made available to MSMEs. Now, what are these loans? Without any guarantee, with the guarantor, without any collateral, these loans would be available from banking system, and there will be 12 months of moratorium on paying principal amount of the loan availed by MSMEs under this category. It is estimated that 45 lakh out of 65 lakh MSMEs can be benefited by this measure which is announced by Honorable Finance Minister. 
Now, again, the big question remains, like who will avail the loan? But some data is released by the RBI and it is displayed, it is exhibited, it is shown that terms are coming for to avail the loans. Let us hope that things will be normalized and many entrepreneurs uh, may come forward to take benefit of this uh, guarantee free or collateral free loans which are offered by the government. There is a second provision as per the UK SINA committee's recommendation to create a subordinate debt fund and government has earmarked 4,000 crores for this debt fund through which some kind of financing can happen to, um, uh, to MSMEs. The third provision of the package is fund of fund, FOF. Initially worth 10,000 crores and then starting many mother funds and daughter funds, this amount can be expanded up to 50,000 crore. And you know, like um, through all these three measures, you can see the first guarantee free loan, second debt fund, third fund of fund. What government intends to do that government wants to provide ample kind of liquidity in the form of loans to micro, small and medium enterprises. So that whoever comes asking loans should get that loan. Although from economics point of view, it may have uh, longer repercussions on bank's balance sheet, or it may have uh, impact on, you know, like recovery of the banks. That's a different issue altogether. Fourth provision is upward redefinition of MSMEs, which I have already explained to you that investment limits and turnover limits of micro, small and medium enterprises are upwardly moved. And so many firms which were in the medium category will come into a small category. Many in the small category will come into a micro category and they're likely to get various benefits in terms of interest rate, in terms of concessions and uh, uh, incentives offered by the government departments and various other portfolios of state governments. Next is the government procurement. It is said that all the departments of the governments, those who procure things from MSMEs, you know, uh, they will enhance or they will, uh, you know, like give more focus on buying from MSMEs. In the Atmanirbhar package, it is said that all those tenders you know, like below 200 crores will no more be a global tenders. They will be indigenous tenders only. And here there is a big chance for MSMEs to apply for such kind of tenders and they may get a bigger market. Rather, the competition is now reduced from say international level or from global level to India level. And that is a, I think, good chance for micro, small and medium enterprises. Uh, you may be aware that various product melas used to be there or trade fairs used to be there in which uh, uh, MSMEs used to showcase their product or uh, exhibit their services and uh, they used to get a bigger market. But now that cannot happen because of the lockdown, because of the social distancing, because of the closure of economy. So government has provided uh, e-marketing linkage and uh, those products, those products can be, those services can be displayed or exhibited on that e-marketing linkage. Uh, as far as payment from government to MSMEs, it is said that government has opened 45 days exclusive window to clear off the payments, uh, which are, you know, like payable to micro and small and medium enterprises from government departments. So that has to be settled within 45 days. There is also reduction in tax deducted at source or tax cut at source, TDS and TCS, and extended compliance dates for income tax or for GST. Initially, they extended up to 30th, 30th of September 2020 and now uh, till December end. So these are the main pillars of the package which is announced by uh, the central government. There is a debate, definite debate, whether it is demand side or supply side. It's a hardcore economics says that we have a law of supply given by JB say, it creates supply, 
if you see or perceive from that point of view package sounds very good you create a supply demand will be generated but if you go from the keynesian macroeconomics point of view you find that demand creates its own supply and if effective demand is missing there is no meaning in the package that is another perception it is good that many academicians many economists are uh taking part in this kind of debate and they are trying to understand the merits and demerits of both the supply side package and demand side package but one thing is very very clear that covid 19 have very serious impact as far as msmes are concerned the theoretical problems are different and practical realities faced by entrepreneurs are different so we need to understand that even though mids are open what is the what is the rate at which production takes place industries are told to uh, run the factories but maintain social distancing don't take production in three shifts rather you have two shifts of some hours have a break in between of two shifts have fumigation of your plants sanitization of your plant taking precautions of your workforce and all those bigger and macro level challenges even at micro level implementation of this uh, you know like advisory is given by the ministries and uh, government it is going to be a challenging one so to sum up covid 19 is definitely a economic tsunami having deep rooted impact devastating effects on lives of entrepreneurs micro small and medium enterprises some of the studies are coming up and they are saying that if something is not done on urgent basis see the package is there but it is said that package will benefit in medium term package will benefit in the longer term what about immediate term where people have you know like gone to their native place exodus of the people moving out of maharashtra out of delhi out of bangalore out of hyderabad to their own places now immediate challenge of saving lives of the people putting things back on the track they are somewhere missing in this atmanirbhar package that is the that is the understanding of economists at larger level msme immediate problems needs to be reunderstood and needs to be uh, reheard and perhaps i i think that one more kind of i won't say package forget the meaning in package immediate relief needs to be understood and to be given for micro small and medium enterprises one or two things we can suggest that waiving of electricity charges for example for next 6 months or moratorium to be given on um, paying electricity kind of charges and other dues uh from msmes to various government departments so uh friends that's it from my side i think that was an opportunity for me to deliberate on or discuss certain things regarding economic impact of uh, covid 19 on overall economy and uh, micro and small and medium enterprises in a particular way so i congratulate organizers for this and thank you for patient listening thank you so much over to you madam preeti yes sir uh dear participants now is there is any query you all can start typing so that we can have a questions i repeat if there is any questions please start typing in chat box so that i can just there is one uh, message in the chat box vibhuti sir yeah uh, Neha Arora, she is saying that in my view, its demand side, which channelizes the e economy more. Can you suggest, sir, how demand can be increased with the packages announced by the government? 
a very good question and i co congratulate her for this uh, very theoretical kind of question uh, see the very simple thing if the demand side is to be focused then uh, if you have understood some basic uh, effective demand kind of macroeconomics as suggested by keynes unless people have some money in their pocket demand will not be generated so if purchasing power is missing then demand will not be materialized or not be realized so now it is an opportunity for the government to see that they put in some cash in the hands of the people so you know like it is always suggested for a country like india where you know like crores and crores of people live in bpl category below poverty line category there is a concept called the ubi universal basic income and i i i appreciate the efforts of the government in past 6 years where they have very strongly developed that jam trinity it is janadhan aadhar and mobile now your janadhan account is linked with your aadhar number and your mobile number is also linked with your bank account and your aadhar number so government has an opportunity to actually put in some cash in this poor people's account so that suppose 500 rupees in per person's account and a family of five people in a bpl category so they will receive 2500 rupees you can imagine so the people who have lost the source of livelihood they have left the urban place like panvel or say bhivandi and they have gone to jharkhand or they have gone to darbhanga somewhere else they will receive 2500 crores uh, i mean 2500 rupees so the purchasing power for that family worth 2500 rupees will be created so there is a no other way but to follow the universal basic income as suggested by nobel laureate uh, dr abhijit banerji and uh, madam duflo so uh, we have to adopt this strategy deposit 500 rupees minimum it could be more than 500 per person in janadhan account to generate an immediate demand um, from the rural segment thank you okay sir uh, again to see uh, another question from neha arora mamoji but uh, sir would you would bank give collateral free, free loan already npas are increasing yeah i told in my presentation that npa is pre presently the npa of uh, banking system in india is around 9.5% of the total loans uh, and if collateral free loans are given that guarantee free loans uh, is the responsibility of uh, government of india understand if the loans are given to msmes even if some loans go non performing non performing asset npa category that will be assured in the payment terms from the government of india but definitely uh, as you have linked this question with npa i am of the opinion that this uh, scenario has definitely affected the income earning and income generating capacity of the enterprises and that is going to impact the repayment capacity of the loans to banks and uh, that is going to aggravate the npa situation of the banking system in india thank you uh, now next question is uh, from dr ne uh, hema mehta how indians attitude need to change to overcome the negative impact of covid 19 in the span of 3 to 5 years yeah it's big question it is uh, really I, i will not say that it is not related to economics but it is related more of the psychology it's related more on the mindset of the people see attitude is something very big in the sense you know like uh, when you decide as a consumer to buy something you you need to now really recheck uh, the buying behavior and introspect yourself like what kind of things actually we need to buy in our day to day life and uh, you know like we have to always see although not just because china has gifted this covid 19 to the world but so many things we keep on buying from um, uh, multinationals and uh, the goods which are not actually manufactured in india 
so we need to understand first thing that wherever possible wherever there is a good viable indian option available we have to go for it that is number one that does not mean that you don't buy foreign goods we live in a open world we live in a globalized village we are a member of the world trade organization try to understand atmanirbhar does not mean that we close the door and we sit inside india permanently no not at all the thing is that as you link that to the mindset we need to change the mindset from buyer to producer see when we used to say make in india make in india if you see the last 10 years journey of india why do we need to depend so much on china most of our msme entrepreneurs they were not producers try to understand they were just distributors or they were just sellers of chinese goods in india to a great extent now this could be considered as an opportunity to introspect and try and see that we manufacture similar products in india so that that is the second thing first thing as a consumer we have to see that whether do we need to be indian and buy indian as a producer we have to introspect and we have to see that we name ourselves as an entrepreneur but do we really do the enterprising activities or do we just buy goods from china and you know like china and sell in the indian market as china is rightly described as a workshop of the world and we keep on importing from china and selling in indian market that is not enterprising that is trading activity so from consumers mindset we need to understand that we need and we can survive with indian goods that is one thing and secondly as a producer we we'll have to see that we innovate we invent we put in the basic knowledge we put in r and d so that what will happen that things might come up things might you know like evolved and we produce those goods and definitely we have a capacity to uh, you know like become a atmanirbhar in that sense in a years to come okay thank you sir uh, next question from bidisha sarkar from where will bank have fund to follow packages announced by government when banks are already suffering from nps what is your opinion good question banks are suffering from npa and i told in earlier answer like 9.5 to 10% npa is there very good question but if you see the deposit behavior of last 45 days you know like many people have started depositing their funds in the banks and now the deposits are getting increased in the banking system and therefore there is a ample liquidity available in the banking system so whether the loans will come back is a different thing but there is no scarcity of the funds in the banking system as far as lending purpose is concerned so it might affect the non performing assets might go up that is definitely there but there is no scarcity of the funds in the banking system at ample liquidity is there i would like to attract your attention immediately after the lockdown was announced on 24th of may 27th of may rbi reduced repo rate to 4.30 and two days back mr shaktikant das the governor of the reserve bank of india in its mpc monetary policy committee which was scheduled to meet in the first week of june they preponed the meeting and they declared that they further reduce the repo rate at 4.00% so 4% repo rate is a historic repo rate lowest repo rate in india and rbi makes fund at cheapest rate available to the banking system and therefore from that crr is reduced repo rate is reduced and rbi is taking care to make funds available to the banking system for lending purpose so although fiscal measures are limited out of this 20 lakh crore package just 2 lakh crores or 1.6 to 2 lakh crores is the fiscal package rest is a liquidity package monetary package so rbi 
hand in hand with the government of india is trying to fight this covid 19 and there will be no shortage of funds for the lending purpose thank you sir uh, next question uh, what opportunities are there for msme after post covid and new business model good see if you see various structures of indian industries uh, it could be automobile it could be electronics it could be pharmaceuticals it could be it could be retail it could be uh, cement we have huge opportunities in a country like india two days ago you know if you are aware the biggest enterprise of india reliance industries limited they have started a new platform called as a jio mart like we have a d mart they have started a jio mart now what is the business model you can just google out and find out what is the business model of jio mart tying up with local grocery shopkeepers or grocery shops making goods available to the people and through online platform is an opportunity to the shop owner in small lanes of a city i was thinking why not this should be taken as an opportunity in automobile sector auto components pharmaceuticals education industry now the present this session is going on on a zoom platform we you know like our entrepreneurs if they take this as a challenge and you will be surprised to know like seven to eight such startups they are invited by the government of india to start our own indian version of a zoom kind of video conferencing platform to be made available many firms are in a race to find out the you know like vaccine for covid 19 institution like siran institute of pune there are many in fact 30 from india they are in the race to invent vaccine and you know like the field of education whether physical whether it is uh, whether it is the construction equipments whether it is electricals electronics these are the sunrise industries and these are the areas where our msme should uh, research and they should find out the opportunities in the days to come i am saying they will succeed because one thing we have to notice that ours is the economic which is strongly supported by the demand we are 3 1.35 billion size of economy it is the second biggest economy uh, as far as population is concerned it is the fourth biggest economy as far as purchasing power criteria is concerned so when we have strong domestic demand you know like new inventions and new innovations in areas which i mentioned earlier it could be an online education it could be pharmaceutical it could be auto it could be it could be ancillary industries more focus can come up on agro based and agro processing firms also where we have large large quantum of agro resources available and um, this can be a big opportunity for msmes in india thank you there are many more questions sir <laughs> so i'll take a few uh, the another question is by manpreet kaur how can a country will recover the economic crisis what kind of package should be given to the needy people after this lockdown can you repeat the question please how can our country will recover the economic crisis what kind of package should be given to the needy people after this lockdown there are two questions in this question actually i'll take the first part what kind of um, way we should follow for recovery of the economy so people talk of different shapes in the economy they talk of v shape what is v shape you have this kind of recovery they talk of l shape they talk of w shape now as far as india is concerned just keep these shapes aside we have to understand and we have to realize the impact on economy first so this is not a small impact this is a very very severe impact it is not a loss of income in one industry or in two industries it is economy wide impact not just msmes everything is affected so obviously the the you know like the time period which will be needed for 
recovery of the economy is going to be a longer one that is first thing now again there will be a dilemma in between as far as policy making is concerned whether it is a lives or livelihood this is going to be a battle between lives versus livelihoods and in this battle government has to first see that we save the lives first and then we can think of livelihoods so if that continues uh, you know like lockdown after lockdown lockdown after lockdown this has worsened the scenario and therefore now time has come i feel that slowly and gradually we have to reopen the economy we have to take adequate precautions as per the guidance of the who and we have to start economic activities otherwise economy is not seen in the near future that is first part of the question and second part of the question was that what needs to be done for the uh, you know like recovery of the economy from poor people's point of view i have already explained in one of the answers like universal basic income that is going to be a strategy mahatma gandhi used to say that you should be able to understand tears in the eyes of the person standing last in the queue and policy makers if they understand this then you know like there is no alternative but to universal basic income putting 500 to 1000 rupees per month in people in the bpl category is the only way out that to again in a dbt format direct benefit transfer format not through middleman that is the answer to second part of the question thank you uh, thank you sir uh, next question is this question sir as there is a huge migration from maharashtra so how can it impact the scenario after covid as india is a labor intensive economy can you please explain yeah there will be huge impact let me tell you there's a reverse migration actually we we should not say the migration it is a reverse migration what has happened over the years people used to migrate from interiors of country to industrial centers or financial centers like mumbai now what has happened because of the pandemic they have remigrated to their places the impact is going to be a devastating one first that the small enterprises uh, or medium enterprises micro enterprises even bigger industries which are located in a state like maharashtra across maharashtra there will be labor shortage and when that labor shortage is there now msmes have to focus more on you know like employing and recruiting the people with minimal skills they have to invest more on reskilling them upgrading the skills of the people and that is going to be one serious impact as far as msme is concerned due to this migration as this reverse migration is there there will be shortage of labor the question is linked to that the migrated remigrated people to their native place luckily monsoon is approaching and in these months of june july august and september they will find some minimal jobs minimal employment in their own villages particularly in the farm sector because this is a farming season farming season is approaching in next couple of months but after that they will have to find out another center another urban center where micro small and medium enterprises are working and again migration will start they may not come back to mumbai from bihar or from bengal they may go to the nearby center where you know like they will try to find out the source of income and employment for them thank you okay hi sir uh, next question is uh, if repo rates are reduced further by rbi don't you think that people will divert their deposits from bank to some other options yeah good question there will be some sort of diversion of the deposits from banks to <clears throat> say nbfcs for example non bank finance companies anticipating better rate of interest over there but when 
covid like situation comes it brings lot of uncertainties along with it and when that insecurity is there when that uncertainty is there many depositors will prefer safety first rather than earning higher interest they will prefer the safety first and therefore uh, i think that most of the depositors will stick to the banking system particularly the public sector banks in which you know like government holding is more and their money is perceived to be more safer in comparison with the private banks or cooperative banks as they have witnessed in last half year how there was a collapse of uh, you know like pmc punjab and maharashtra cooperative bank and there was near collapse of s bank and all uh, and huge lines used to be there in front of these banks to withdraw their own money so from safety and security point of view uh, although some depositors will switch over to non bank finance companies for their deposits but most of the depositors will prefer to be with public sector banks thank you now the last question i'm taking uh, yeah please what about increase in the unemployment of youth due to covid 19 what are the relief schemes of the government for the increase in number of dependents i didn't get your question the question is what about increase in the unemployment of youth due to covid 19 what are the relief schemes of government for the increase in number of dependents very good see the question is that what about the unemployment yes there is a huge unemployment as it is presented in my presentation cmi says that so many lakhs 24% is the rate of unemployment it is crystal clear that people have lost their jobs but we need to understand that in a country like india unfortunately there is no social security where is the social security See, 27 million people losing job in the age of 17 to 27 or 30, 20, 30 to 40, 20 to 30 is a serious thing. People work in the construction industry, people work in the leather industry, people work in gems and jewelry, people work in the textile industry, people work in repairing kind of industries, plumbing. So the thing is that we do not have a country like India proper manpower planning. and you know like there is no proper uh, kind of social security net for these people when they lose jobs in a western countries like america they have uh, you know like unemployment allowance so that unemployment allowance can be a dream in a country like india it's not a reality so the thing is that government's approach to this should be that some sort of social security some sort of skilling of the people and some sort of uh, emphasis on rural agro based industries i repeat the word rural agro based industries mahatma gandhi ji gave a message go to villages we did exactly opposite we went to cities then cities became a mega cities mega cities became a metro cities and then what happened you know the story is that the thing is that there has to be more focus on rural economy now rural infrastructure there has to be massive spending by the government in developing rural infrastructure where people will find jobs in their own villages or at least their own talukas their own district a person from silchar don't have to travel to surat or travel to mumbai in search of a job so government's approach should be spend more on rural infrastructure spend more on mahatma gandhi national rural employment guarantee scheme mg narega and all and try and see that more you know like hands are employed in their own geographic locations so that issue of migration and reverse migration can be avoided thank you thank you sir for the query solving i hope everyone got satisfied answer now yeah. i would like to thank you sir we are glad that we are we are have you uh, we have you here for the wonderful session and we have got the opportunity to attend this session thank you very much for the enlightening and informative session for the day we will definitely share this knowledge with our students and our surroundings to make them aware about the msme that is atmanirbhar bharat 
on behalf of management principal and all would like to appreciate you for taking out your precious time and enlightening our knowledge on policies and effects thank you thank you, thank you so much thank you uh, thank you. my pleasure yeah thank you sir uh, now i would like to introduce mr viral radia who is an edtech innovator and co-founder of edfly he is technical hacker and serial entrepreneur with 12 plus year experience in education technology uh, viral sir uh, over to you hi good afternoon am i audible yes sir yeah, you are. Uh, Okay. Thank you for the introduction. Uh, it's very exciting to be the part of. Uh, I'm really happy. Uh, I have a leadership team. I'm sure all of us would have benefited from this. Uh, so your voice is not clear. Is it better now? Yeah. Now it's better. Okay, I try to be a little louder. So, uh, uh, okay, thanks again for having us here today, and uh, uh, it was a wonderful first session uh, by Somnath Dibhute sir. Uh, lately, uh, I had attended a Thai conference where uh, Sir Deepak Parekh also, as mentioned, as a bank, they are investing about hundred crores in startups. So, uh, in lately, the banks also have started investing. Uh, in early stage startups, uh, wonderful uh, news for all the entrepreneurs. Also, as an entrepreneur, uh, I was very happy, very excited to know uh, these things. Uh, so, uh, let me uh, introduce uh, our platform at this moment. We are an e-learning setup. Uh, we have a platform which we have started about a few weeks from now. Uh, It's called edflylearn.com, and uh, let me begin by sharing my screen. So, uh, firstly, let me start by sharing some internet statistics. As India, we are the global leaders for monthly data consumption. We have about nine point eight. Of data that we consume on an average every month, which is more than one to three times the way it was five years back, and we are the cheapest internet services that we have today across the survey done in about 200 countries out there. So uh, let's use these things to our advantage, uh, as we know that all of us are locked down, and. Uh, With the platform, with the e-learning platform, we can still have some experience with our learning. So uh, this is uh, one good thing that we can see here. Uh, as we talk, I've also got some statistics where they've said that they've got more than seventeen thousand lakh mobile phones that were shipped to India last year, which means that from the center of gravity, from your computers, has moved. to your mobile phones and which is practically in all our hands all the time so uh, that also makes this learning easy i've got 47% of indian users who have used internet uh, who are using regularly and most of them are in the age group of our are in the age group of our students so uh, that is also one good news so practically what am i saying here is that as students most of us are ready to consume content online uh, as teachers today i think quite a few teachers who have started adopting technology who have started adopting learning management tools uh, but quite a few of us are not are new to this platform uh, so it is a few weeks from now i have been asked questions that uh, why are you investing so heavily on e learning now why are you investing so heavily on faculty development program and uh, during then i had a gut feel that this is going to be picked up in india now because of the lockdown all of us as teachers we are going to have time we are going to have this opportunity to equip ourselves with technology 
to equip ourselves to using such platforms to train our students online okay so like uh, uh, i've been listening uh, this situation is going to stay for some more time and uh, all of us are have been asked to learn to live with the situation so with platforms like these we have an opportunity today to also start this learning experience online okay so this platform is called edslylearn.com you can have a look at it it's a beautiful platform that we have built uh, our engineers are working really hard towards bringing the uh, uh, features more easy more uh, more features uh, and so on as we talk we have got more than 15000 teachers who have adopted this platform and uh, more than 2 terabytes of content is already curated through this platform so uh, uh, which is more than 7 times the number of users who have adopted my platform in last 10 years okay so uh, one good news so uh, the answer to all my faculty members all my investors all my team members who have been asking this question we are the numbers that we have today and i believe that few months from now we'll have more number of users uh, who are going to adopt e learning uh, more number of faculty members who are going to adopt e learning uh, and hence more students adopting e learning let me uh, take you through what are the basic concepts that we require from a e learning platform so as a teacher uh, what are those basic features that you would require via a e learning platform i would uh, uh, put across these also write off a feature that you think you should have from a e learning platform on our youtube channel for now uh, these are the basic features that you for sure require one is you would want to create your own course you uh, should be able to conduct a lecture a live lecture through this platform you should be able to upload content uh, on this platform which is going to be available with your students throughout semester in a easy to use format uh, what is uh, you need engagement uh, engagement with your students you should be able to have a conversation with your students on this platform fifth is you should be able to give assignments uh, and uh, maybe you should be able to uh, put across uh, exam for your students you should be able to test on how they have understood uh, the particular concept and so on so these are the basic features from a uh, e learning platform so uh, fortunately for us this uh, far we have come that we have been able to accommodate all these features in life uh, some additional features is also what we have put on this platform uh, which i am going to showcase during my uh, presentation and my demonstration okay uh, i need a moment i hope uh, i am audible to all yes sir you are audible okay i think my voice is breaking uh so anyway we'll continue your voice is breaking uh, repeatedly okay that might be because of the poor infrastructure at my end but anyway we'll try and uh, so i think uh, so far we have just started uh let me continue so uh let's go to the basic steps that you would require from a e learning platform let's go through those steps the first step is you are going to create your own course you are going to add content to your course you are going to schedule a lecture and you are going to invite students so let's have a look at these four things how you will be able to do this through edsign on as a platform so here i have logged in to edsign learn you can visit our website etlylearn.com you can go through the website you will be able to figure out the broad features that we have to offer what all features are there for a teacher for a student for a institute and so on you can go through it you can register you can subscribe yourself as a teacher it's a free platform for the teachers it's a free platform for students it's not free for the institutions though 
So uh, let me log in to the platform. I've already logged in here. As you can see here, I have 90 courses that I've created. I've got 26 chapters. I've got 213 students and 11 subtopics. So let's create your first uh, course. Let's create your first course. You can go to this, this schedule lecture tab on your right. When you click on this schedule lecture, it's a very easy thing. You got to select your academic year. Have some few basic questions that are asked. For example, the course name, let's say the course name for me is uh, BSC. The subject that I teach is, let's say, math. The chapter that I'm going to teach, the first chapter that I'm going to teach is, uh, let's say, circles. It's asking me, do I want to schedule a lecture? I'll say yes. Schedule this first lecture for what date? Okay, let me choose this for today at uh, 4.45 p.m. So let's say 5.45 p.m. And I'll save this. So it's given me a code that I have to share with my students. So I'll copy this. And I can share this code via the email or WhatsApp with my students. So for example, let me choose WhatsApp here. Okay, I've copied this code with me and uh, I'm going to share this via the WhatsApp with my students, for example. You can do the same. So what have I done here is I've created my first course. I have uh, scheduled my first lecture. Uh, I have put my topic, which is circles under the subject math. Taking some time. Let me share this in, let's say, this group, one of the groups that we have created. And uh, you can see here that it says that you are invited for a BSc lecture by mathematics by Viral Dadia on circles. Okay. So when your students click on this, they'll be able to access your course. They'll be able to access your content. So for now, let's move on to adding the content to your topic that you've created. Here, when you create this, it will show you the, uh, the tile, tile. This is what we call here. The tile is BSc Math Circles. You can click on this tile. Okay, and you can see that my lecture is scheduled from 4.45 to 5.45. I want to add more content to this. So I'll go to add content. I'll add learning objectives. Uh, you can add a test learning objective here. And just for testing purpose, I'm adding some learning objectives here. Okay. Similarly, you can add more content. You can add more video lectures and so on. I just Add a video, for example, here. Uh, and let me add this YouTube video here. This is a session that I've just finished. So I, I'm pasting a YouTube link here. And let me save this. You can see that learning objective video and so on. You can keep on adding n number of videos, you can keep on adding n number of learning objectives and so many various types of contents from this platform. Just, I'm going to hold this here for five seconds. So you can uh, add these many type of contents. To repeat, the first thing that we did was we signed up on our platform. The second thing is as a teacher. The second thing is I've created using the schedule lecture tab on the right on my dashboard. I've scheduled my first lecture. I've created my first content. First course. And then via clicking on that tile, we could add content for that particular topic that I've created. Here, as you can see on the top, I have created this BSc mathematics circle and I am adding content under this particular topic. Okay. And I've also shared this with one of our groups where students will be able to join my course. Okay. So these are the basic things. It's a very simple platform. There's also a helpline number out there if you want 
if you're getting stuck somewhere you can give a call there and we'll be more than happy to help you okay okay let me uh, take you through the next concept so we have done the basic things on the platform which is created a call add content schedule a lecture and invited our students so from the platform perspective especially in these times what are we looking at we are looking at from maintaining databases of students teachers the content that has been uploaded and we are able to also look at the examination results okay so these are the things that we are being able to maintain from our software uh, we can try this out let's look at some advanced concepts so you can also give assignments via the same tool you can also give a quiz via the same tool uh, you can do advanced course management this is more applicable for institute as we are all teachers here uh, i'll skip the course management part if somebody is interested in the course management we can take that up and uh, the most important concept here is the content store okay so let me just give you more details about content store as a concept is something that you can imagine of a youtube for educators okay i'll just show you that particular thing under the menu under the content tab here on the left i have an option of content store okay so here you can search for various topics that you have looking to teach as a teacher you can also upload your content onto our content store you can make your content public so we have huge population of teachers and quite a few quite a good number of teachers are the ones who really have the knack of creating quality content i have been getting messages from lots and lots of teachers with regards to uh, with regards to uh, the that they want to join our content programs and all that so uh, those things are working fine so here for the ones who are not being able to curate good quality content can actually go to our content store look at the content and download the content which is relevant to their students which is relevant to uh, the iq or the or the aptitude aptitude of their students we have as we talk more than 500 teachers on board for curating some good quality content for the platform okay so uh, this is one thing that we built i'm sure over a period of a month we'll have further more content we are looking forward to have at least 20 terabytes of uh, good quality content on our platform in a month time so by the time we start our session by the time we start teaching to our students uh, we should all have uh, the pieces of the content which will be more relevant to us so uh, this is about the content store i'll be more than happy to revise or to go through some concepts if somebody is interested in uh, those concepts this is our typical college structure this is the exact structure that we'll be able to emulate on this system as well this is the exact same structure that we are following for most of our universities however if a particular trust or a particular college has a different structure than this on the institute login uh, they have uh, those features also they can customize their own structure with the amount of users who are joining on board with uh, the amount of content that is being uh, produced and uploaded onto us security was one thing that as a company we have heavily invested in so uh, this platform is got a double layer security the first layer is for those of us who will sign up or have signed up onto this platform would have i recognize that we have got a otp verified mobile number system so all the mobile numbers across the world are kyc compliant which means if something goes wrong from a particular mobile number we can always trace back to the source uh, that is the first thing uh, the second security layer is for all the platforms that we are collaborating with for example we have already collaborated with zoom google hangout uh, amazon chime and we are also collaborating with various quiz platforms like kahoot uh, and so on and so forth we are collaborating with various other tools which can help our educators for e learning you will only have access to that particular system if you have subscribed 
or if you are a user on edfly learn platform no user from outside this platform will have access to any of this content so this is a double layer security that we have built every day we hear some stories about a lecture that was being had that paid in some prank was featured online some of the other mishap so learning without security is a very dangerous thing let's not do that let's rely on a platform which also gives us security so be it this platform or any other platform ensure that you are investing in a platform which has solid security which is hack proof so uh, this is one thing uh, like i said on the content store for the teachers who are uploading the quality content and who where this content is also used where this is also downloaded by other fellow members other fellow teachers we are giving royalty to to those teachers for that content we are incentivizing we are giving the rewards to the platform so those programs are on uh, for those of us right now who have the knack of creating good quality content or who would learn to uh, uh learn to make some good quality content who have knack of teaching should upload their content and monetize from this should join various programs that we have uh, to benefit yourself and the society as well okay. so various programs that we are running through this platform are one is the beta program this is for the users who have used our platform regularly we have put them onto beta group their suggestions their so whatever we develop new is open to this group of members first after their suggestions after their approval we put it live to our other members we are also running content programs this is for our teachers who are who have the knack of creating content uh, we are running various content programs for them Training them on how to produce good quality content. I have already said the details in the past. We are running various state faculty development programs like the one that we are running right now. We have had more than thirty programs so far. I myself might have conducted more than twenty programs. Uh, I uh, am looking forward to more such programs. We are going to heavily invest in more faculty development programs on various aspects. uh so stay tuned uh, register on our subscribe to our youtube channel you will get more details there as well uh fourth thing is with the help of the experience that we have got so far via the platform we are also writing some guidelines for effectivity in these current situations uh like for example what is a better learning environment for the students at home simple but most of us forget to follow those what are uh, those basic tools from a teacher perspective that we should use for better learning so these are the few guidelines that we have been able to write uh, some new rules that we have been able to write uh, our classical rules that we have been following for more than 100 years in our classical classroom training program need to be rewritten for these times uh, and fortunately with the help of our panels on board we have been able to do so uh, and again lastly we are collaborating with more players edfly alone is not enough there are more requirements by our teachers and we are collaborating with more platforms for bringing this uh, uh experience to make this whole thing better as we talk uh, our engineers are working very hard to give you the required experience uh, uh, edfly is committed i am committed Uh, giving all of us a platform that we can rely on we are uh, committed to investing heavily on this platform so that all of us as faculty members and hence the students will be able to benefit uh, from this platform in these times or maybe in future also i believe that uh, once we post this and we figure out the effectivity the use the benefits of such platform will be able to incorporate this in our curriculum as well uh, i mean there are very various, various areas that i can really think of however just to give an example maybe for example assignments today we can actually ask the students to submit the assignments from this platform and as a teacher you will have to you'll not be able to uh, put the pain to manage that so for the students who have submitted the assignments you can grade them online for those who have not submitted you can keep a track of them very easily 
so otherwise let's say for example on an email you still would have had to manually maintain the ledger of the students who have not uh, submitted your uh, assignments you have to separately manage their grades and so on so such platforms i'm sure will save a lot of time and uh, bandwidth we also have a plagiarism test for the students who have submitted up assignments where they have copied and all that we'll be able to trace all that here so multiple things this is just an example uh, once you start using the platform you'll sure the benefits and i'm sure that whether you like it or no this is something that is going to be adopted uh, for the future this is already adopted in the west when our students from here visit uh, universities abroad they already are using such systems but it is something new for them okay? they know because of what they've heard from the past that something like this is going to happen but trust me it is still something that is new why don't we as teachers inculcate these in our pedagogy in uh, our learning okay. so this is a time i believe that uh, things will change uh, here as well again check out our product uh, let me also introduce we as a company are a erp solutions company only for educational institutes we have our online admissions and fees collections platform Last year we did more than four lakh transactions from this platform. We have more than thirty colleges from Mumbai University uh, who are attached to this platform. We also have our HR, payroll, library, communications, uh, travel management, hosting management. So a uh, lot of features for educational institutes are bundled onto our ERP solution. With this, uh, I thank you all. If there are any questions, uh, I'm happy to take those. Are there any questions? Taking time. Let me just check on the channel if if anyone if any one of us has any question, uh, we can take those questions now. More than happy to take the questions. What, What different feature this LMS has compared has to Moodle? Compared to Yeah. Okay. So I'll take this question. So uh, I have used Moodle in the past. I don't think you can do a live lecture from Moodle. Okay. I don't think uh, you can have a communication module with your students through Moodle. So those features is something that we've added. Apart from that, I think uh, from the learning management perspective, uh, we offer similar features. Uh, There are one more question. Uh, decision on hiring such services is always in the hands of management. Though we recommend further updates, we don't get too much. Ah, uh, I agree with you, ma'am. So, uh, the decisions are in the hands of the management. Uh, so, management, I'm sure, will have multiple options to choose from. But as teachers, uh, probably if you like the platform, you can recommend to your management. for that matter any platform if you like a particular platform i think uh, you can request your management to take that up uh, and include that uh, within your institute uh, adopt a particular platform for your institute so that can happen maybe yeah that's it uh, i think uh, if there are any questions difference between moodle and Slide. I've already answered this. Uh, I think uh, we've got few more features which Moodle in uh, does not have. So, uh, for example, you can't take a live lecture from Moodle. Sure, from our platform, we'll be able to uh, take that also. You can organize a quiz. I can see another question. As already mentioned, can we organize quiz, set question paper, whiteboard, attendance record, etc. Yes, you can organize a quiz from this platform. You can set up a question paper. There is a whiteboard option. We are conducting our lectures via Zoom. Don't worry about the security. We are, we have our own security layer over and above Zoom. Nobody from outside Edfly Learn uh, or your students will be able to attend your lecture. So you can use a whiteboard from Zoom. You can also have attendance records here. Uh, for example, let me just show you this. On 
my dashboard right now you can see that there is a start lecture button and you share my screen again so on my dashboard you can see that i have a start lecture button here when i click on the start lecture uh, i'll be taken to my zoom lecture automatically so i'll be disconnect from this but when for a, right now let me just do this okay so now i have started this lecture and uh, let me also approve some of the students who have tried to join my platform right now so these four students have tried to join my platform right now i'll confirm them okay so now when i end my lecture here on my dashboard now i started the lecture let me end my lecture here and can you see that all these students are marked absent yeah so these students right now have just put up a random lecture if they would have attended my lecture all of them would have been marked present automatically here for now i can see that they are absent and i can save so you can take your own attendance it is automated the moment your student attends your lecture uh, they'll be marked present okay so i think we have been able to cover most of the questions Time for teachers and students in India. Yeah, it is going to be free for teachers and students. Okay, so I think uh, that's all. Uh, if there are any other questions, we might be able to take them uh, outside this session, maybe on the WhatsApp or something like that. Okay, thank you, sir. Uh, I. i would like to thank you for this uh, lms knowledge because it is right now current demand due to covid 19 i also thank everyone and we appreciate that all the participants are here with us uh, just an announcement that kindly fill the feedback form uh, along with the quiz for the certificate link will be shortly provided in the group thanks again for joining us today we will see you next time with your permission i am ending this session please be at home and stick be sick thank you i end this yes